Now let's create our locations table model and controller that we will need for the delivery of the orders. First let's use the php artisan make migration command. Then we will make the location model and then our location controller. In our location table we will first have the user ID and then we will need the street, building and area, and they are all of type string. And now for our location model we will add feeable, and inside of it we will add our location table columns, area, user ID, street, and building. After that we need to write our relationship between the user and the location model, so we will make a new public function we will name it user and then we will return this belongs to, and we will pass it two arguments the first one is the user model and the second one is the foreign key which is the user ID. But no we need to add it in our migration so we will go there and write foreign ID and we specify the column which is user ID. And then we need to add the reference to it so that we specify on which column in the user table it will reference so we will write ID. And then we specify on which table and we say users. And then on delete cascade and that means when we delete the user the location that is associated with it will be deleted. We'll dive into the location controller, where we'll implement the logic for storing, updating, and deleting location data in our API. Let's create the store method. This method handles the creation of new location records. In the store method, we start by validating the incoming request data. We ensure that street, building, and area fields are required. Next, we create a new location record in our database using the data provided in the request. We associate this location with the currently authenticated user by setting user underscore ID to the user's ID. Finally, we return a JSON response indicating that the location has been added, along with an HTTP status code of 201, created. Moving on to the update method. This method handles the updating of existing location records. In the update method, we begin with data validation, making sure street, building, and area are provided. We then attempt to find the location record with the given ID. If the location exists, we update its street, building, and area fields with the new values from the request and save the changes. Lastly, the destroy method. This method handles the deletion of location records. In the destroy method, we attempt to find the location record with the provided ID. If the location exists, we delete it from the database using the delete method. We return a JSON response indicating that the location has been updated. If the location with the provided ID is not found, we return a JSON response stating that the location was not found. That wraps up our location controller.
It's responsible for handling the core functionality of our location API, including creating, updating, and deleting location records. Now let's make the product table, model, and controller using the same commands but we need to add the location to our roots before going to the product. In this section, we'll define the roots in our API to connect with the location controller we created earlier. Roots act as endpoints that allow clients to interact with our API. Let's define the routes that correspond to the methods in our location controller. We start by creating a root group. This group allows us to apply common attributes and middleware to multiple routes. The store root is defined as a post request to the store endpoint. This route is responsible for creating a new location record using the store method in the location controller. Next, we have the update root, which is defined as a put request to the update ID endpoint. The update root is used to update an existing location record with a specific ID using the update method in the location controller. Finally, we define the destroy root as a delete request to the destroy ID endpoint. The destroy root is responsible for deleting a location record with a specific ID using the destroy method in the location controller. These routes serve as the entry points to our location API, allowing clients to perform create, update, and delete operations on location records. Now let's dive into the migration code for creating the products table. Inside the pup method, we define the schema for the products table. We create the products table with various columns, such as ID, category underscore ID, brand underscore ID, name, is underscore trendy, is underscore available, price, amount, discount, image, and timestamps. We set default values and data types for each column. For instance, is underscore trendy defaults to false, and price is a double with eight digits in total and two decimal places. We also define foreign key constraints for category underscore ID and brand underscore ID. We ensure that category underscore ID and brand underscore ID are foreign keys, and they reference the ID column in the category and brands tables, respectively. That's the migration code for creating the products table. Migrations provide a structured way to manage your database schema in Laravel. And now let's dive into the product model code. We specify the feeable property, which determines which attributes can be mass assigned. Here. We specify the attributes that can be mass assigned, including category underscore ID, brand underscore ID, name, price, discount, is underscore available, is underscore trendy, image, and amount. Next, we define relationships with other models. 
We create category and brand methods, each returning a belongs to relationship with the category and brand models, respectively. These relationships enable us to retrieve the category and brand associated with a product. That's the product model, which represents our product data structure and defines its relationships with other models. Models are an integral part of Laravel applications, and they help us interact with the database. Let's dive into the product controller code, starting with the index method. In the index method, we begin by retrieving a paginated list of product records. We use product paginate 10 to fetch the products in chunks of 10 per page. We check if there are products available. If there are, we return a JSON response with the product data and an HTTP status code of 200, OK. If no products are found, we return a JSON response indicating that there are no products. Now, let's explore the show method, which allows us to view a specific product by its ID. The show method is used to retrieve and display details of a specific product based on its ID. We attempt to find the product with the specified ID using product find ID. If the product is found, we return a JSON response with the product details and an HTTP status code of 200, OK. If the product is not found, we return a JSON response indicating that the product was not found. That's the index and show methods in our product controller. These methods allow us to retrieve and view product records. Inside the store method, we validate the incoming request data. We use the validator to ensure that the required fields, such as a name, price, category underscore ID, brand underscore ID, discount, amount, and image are present and meet certain validation criteria. We create a new product instance and assign values to its properties. We instantiate a new product and populate its attributes with the validated data from the request. Now, let's handle the image upload. Here, we check if the request contains a file named image. If it does, we handle the image upload process. We determine the file path where the image should be stored and check if a file with the same name exists. If it does, we delete it to replace it with the new image. We get the uploaded file, extract its extension, and create a unique file name based on the current time. Then, we attempt to move the file to the specified location. If any exceptions occur during the file upload, we catch and handle them. Finally, we update the product-image property with the new file name. We save the product and return a response. After successfully handling the image upload and populating the product data, 
we save the product to the database and return a JSON response indicating that the product has been added with an HTTP status code of 201, created. That's the store method in our product controller. It not only adds a new product to the database but also manages image uploads. Let's dive into the update method, which allows us to modify existing product records. In the update method, we start with data validation to ensure that the request contains the required fields and meets validation criteria. We then attempt to find the product record by its ID using product find ID. If the product exists, we update its attributes with the validated data from the request, similar to the store method. We also handle image upload in the same way as in the store method. Finally, we save the updated product and return a JSON response indicating that the product has been updated. Now, let's move on to the destroy method for deleting product records. The destroy method allows us to delete product records by their ID. We attempt to find the product with the specified ID. If it exists, we delete it using the delete method. We return a JSON response indicating that the product has been deleted. That's the update and destroy methods in our product controller. Enabling us to update and delete product records as needed. We'll define the routes for our website. These routes will connect with the methods we've implemented in the product controller, allowing us to interact with product records. Let's start by creating the routes that correspond to the methods in our product controller. We begin by defining a root group. This group allows us to apply common attributes and middleware to multiple routes. The first route is the index route, defined as a GET request to the index endpoint. The index route is used to retrieve a paginated list of product records using the index method in the product controller. Next, we have the show route, defined as a GET request to the show ID endpoint. The show route allows us to view a specific product by its ID using the show method in the product controller. Moving on to the store route, which is defined as a post request to the store endpoint. The store route is responsible for adding a new product record using the store method in the product controller. Now, we have the update route, defined as a put request to the update ID endpoint. The update route allows us to modify an existing product record with a specific ID using the update method in the product controller. Finally, we define the destroy route as a delete request to the destroy ID endpoint. The destroy route is used to delete a product record with a specific ID using the destroy method in the product controller. These routes serve as the entry points to our website, allowing us to retrieve, view, create, update, and delete product records.